Yo, what's up guys, it's Jeff, and today we have another beta from Apple, that would be iOS 14 beta five. And we also have quite a bit to talk about in regards to improvements, so more on that later in today's video. Now we also saw new betas for watchOS 7, iPadOS, macOS Big Sur, and tvOS 14. So just in case you are on those betas, you should be getting an update via the software update pages. Now, just in case you all didn't know, there are now public versions of watchOS 7 betas, so do go on to beta.apple.com to get more information on how you can join the public betas that Apple has on offer. So with all of that being said, let's move on to beta 5, check out what's new, and also discuss why beta 5 is super important. Okay, so I'll be the first to say it, beta 4 was a bit of a mess. Uh, this was actually one of the most buggy betas I've tested in quite some time. And it was very apparent that Apple didn't put as much focus into this beta with the user experience in mind as previous betas that we've seen before. The UI experience was extremely buggy in the sense that it would just crash the springboard, certain things would just not work, and for me specifically, the UI would completely hang for several seconds at a time constantly throughout the day. Now, one of the most annoying issues was actually notifications and accessing your apps from those notifications. So if I got a message or an email, I'd tap on the notification and then the app would try to open it, but ultimately crash. Now, I will say that all of this is not to complain, but just to inform you guys of what's actually going on in my personal experience. This is still beta and we are still working out how iOS 14 will ultimately work, but just in case you all are wanting to get onto the betas, uh, maybe on your daily drivers at this point in time, I'm just kind of letting you guys know what the potential issues are if you guys go ahead and install these betas. Now let's move past that and uh, kind of highlight some of the benefits of iOS 14 beta 5 specifically as this is a much better build and I believe a lot more focus was put in to the user experience here in beta 5. So let's go over the finer details of beta 5, the new features, and then we'll get on to the user experience. Okay guys, so we have beta 5 installed onto our iPhone 11 Pro Max here and let's go ahead and check out some of the finer details of this build versus what we saw in beta 4. Now if we go into settings, general, and then about, we'll get to that information. Of course, software version still at iOS 14. And then our new build number is 18A5351D. And that D does indicate that we are now on, on kind of like a more stable build versus uh, previous builds that we've seen. So uh, do expect that these builds get a little bit more stable as we move forward on into the later builds. Um, so. Going down into the modem firmware here, we have a 1.50.25. That is a new modem firmware build. So if you're having any issues whatsoever um, with uh, internet, Bluetooth, anything like that, that should help with that. Um, as we've seen in the past, it doesn't necessarily totally resolve it, but it should at the very least help just a little bit in regards to those possible issues. Now, another thing that I wanted to uh, confirm with you guys is just storage space. So it looks like here our storage space is about normal. Um, we can go ahead and kind of um, look at that specifically in general and then going into iPhone storage. So if you uh, kind of like let that calculate and just see exactly what it is, as you can see, um, our other is far less than what we were seeing before. Um, so if we go all the way down to the bottom, the system is not using as much as it was in the uh, first like one through three betas. So it looks like that issue is kind of officially gone uh, where it was kind of like overinflated. The system data was overinflated um, and indexing just continued on and on. Looks like that is now fixed and it is confirmed. I wasn't going to confirm it in like, until like at least two builds had that issue uh, kind of gone, but it looks like that is now solved. So let's go ahead back out into the settings app and get started on looking at uh, some of the new things that we saw here within beta 5 versus beta 4. So if we go into exposure notifications, uh, we can turn on exposure notifications now. So if we do that, there's a prompt that comes up and we can actually go throughout uh, kind of all of this uh, information here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you guys what it's like to set this up. So you select your country, um, select your state. I'm in California. And um, basically it says exposure notifications are not available. But let's back out of this really quickly because I do know a state that now has exposure notifications available. So if I go into uh, Virginia, 
Seems like exposure notifications are not available there either, um, but I did have an app that I was gonna show you guys that actually allows uh, for exposure notifications in Virginia. It's called, um, let's type it in here, COVID-wise. So this is for Virginia only, um, Virginia Department of Health. This is their exposure notification app and it's supposed to connect with Apple's. Um, so I don't know why that's not working exactly right now, um, but it should be working in the near future. Um, but if you guys want to go ahead, turn this on, select your country or region, select the state that you're in or the area that you're in, and it should be working now. So that's a huge plus with beta five and it looks like that's progressing quite nicely here. Okay, so another thing I wanted to show you guys was the Control Center has a new feature. It's called Show Home Controls. And Show Home Controls basically allows you to put custom home controls, like the home app controls, in your Control Center. So we have a new look here. We have our home um, app is just a little bit different in size. It's more of the size of the screen mirroring, um, but just a tad bit smaller. And uh, as you can see here, there is a new animation for that, and it just shows all of the available controls that I have. Now, I don't use the home app specifically, um, so I have very little controls here. I just have my HomePod set up and uh, my Apple TV, but it has an extra row here for maybe controlling lights, um, controlling sound of any kind, um, everything like that. Maybe locks, cameras, all of that, you can add that down in that row down below. Now this does come automatically on. I'm going to turn it off since I don't use it. And as you can see, um, it changes back to what you were seeing before, just that tight uh, kind of look there. And I don't have the home app uh, in my control center, so I can always add that at a later date. But that gives you a little bit more control there um, for if you have like home, uh, home app controls that you want to put in your control center to just to access them a little bit faster. Okay, so something else I wanted to show you was in the settings app in display and brightness. So if we go into display and brightness, it gives you kind of this new look here for light and dark theme. So it changes the wallpaper automatically for that light and dark theme. Now, of course, I can turn the automatic off and just keep it uh, constantly on the light theme if you like that wallpaper and just wanna leave it there. Um, but I believe if you go into dark mode now, you kind of have to use that darker theme wallpaper. And I actually like that because it uh, if you have, like take for instance, this wallpaper here, but a dark theme, it really doesn't look all too dark at all. So um, it looks like that is now changed here. Um, and I honestly like that look. So it just gives you kind of a more in-depth preview as to how the light and dark theme will look, look perspectively uh, when you turn those, uh, those toggles on or off. Now, if we go back to the home screen here and we open up a folder of any kind, you can actually see these are a little bit more narrow. So they're pinched in a little bit. Um, and I don't know exactly why Apple did this, but to me, I don't really care whether or not it's a little bit more pinched or not. I would rather have more space within um, these, these folders, to be honest, um, but that has now changed. They're a little bit more narrow. And let's talk about widgets. Widgets is uh, constantly growing and we have um, some new widgets here. So if we go all the way down into the news widget and we go all the way over, we see we have a new widget here and this thing is massive. It actually takes up an entire um, screen or an entire uh, kind of area here. And it looks like it automatically added into the left side here. Um, I actually don't know if this will fit onto um, our regular uh, kind of screen here. So let me go ahead and try it again. It hasn't let me so far, but that's just because it's so big. So as you see, it's only allowing it to go into the widget center. And this thing is massive. I'm not exactly sure who this is for. I know I personally won't use it, um, but yeah, it's just very interesting. Apple has added that now. Um, and yeah, you can go ahead and check that out if you are interested in a very large news widget. Um, now, one other thing in regards to widgets is if we go into dark mode here, let's go ahead and turn on dark mode. So now dark mode is activated. If you look at the calendar widget, that has gotten a little bit more gray than, than what we saw before in beta four. So just a very slight change there in regards to dark mode and um, how that calendar widget will look. Now, one other thing that I saw um, was in the settings app. One last thing with the settings app is if you go all the way down to photos, you now have an option to um, 
activate your hidden album or um, you can disable that. So um, basically you can show a hidden album or you can take it off. I don't know why there's a toggle for this. I don't seem to think that a hidden album should be like available if it's hidden. I'm not sure, but um, I don't like this feature. It's kind of useless uh, for me at least, um, but that option is now there in the photos uh, menu in the settings app. So you can go ahead and check that out if you want to. Now, if we go into the clock app, uh, let's go into the clock app here and you go into like alarms, you can go ahead and check out this new uh, kind of animation. We've seen this before, so it's really nothing new. But if we go to edit an alarm and change the time, um, we can now actually uh, go ahead and swipe up and down on the time and change it like that. So that's really cool. Um, we don't actually have to use um, the kind of like buttons down here or the keypad down there. We can actually change it all by swiping. So that is pretty cool. Um, now you can also swipe on the AM and PM as well. So it looks like you don't have to actually, actually access this little keypad here. You can do it all through um, the menu up there. Now, another small change that I noticed is in the camera app. And at the top, the arrow here is a little bit smaller to access those extra settings at the bottom. So just a little bit smaller. I don't know why, uh, simply because I liked it bigger because it's easier to uh, basically tap on and access these settings because I'm actually one that accesses the 16 by nine aspect ratio quite a bit. So um, very weird that Apple changed that smaller design. Hopefully they expand everything just a little bit bigger. I would like to see that just so these controls get a little bit closer to the bottom here so I can access them a little bit better. Um, but yeah, very weird. They should have ac actually pushed this all the way down so we can access it down here and then access these controls um, versus keeping it up here. So hopefully they do that in the near future um, and change that. But yeah, that little icon there is now changed just a little bit smaller than what we were seeing before. Now, another thing that I noticed was uh, voice memos has a new prompt. So this is what it looks like. Um, and yeah, there's not too much to say about this new prompt, but you will be getting prompts just like these around iOS 14 um, when you go into apps um, that you haven't been before since an update. So just beware, uh, not really beware, just be aware um, that you will be seeing those, uh, these as you go about uh, kind of like going out through the apps and everything like that in iOS 14. Um, it's just prompts to show you like some of the new features and what you can use the app for. It's nothing major. Um, you can just go ahead and click continue if you don't really care and uh, go on to your app experience. Now, one last thing that I wanted to talk about and something that is really pissing me off when it comes to iOS 14, because throughout the betas, I've actually lost 3% battery health just through um, these betas and installing them. I'm not saying the betas are exactly doing this to my battery health, but it's just interesting because I keep on losing maximum capacity throughout these betas. I started out at 98 when I was on iOS 13.6 um, betas and now we're back down uh, to 95. And I've sort of recorded this along throughout my experience of uh, going on these, these iOS 14 betas. I've shown you guys how it's decreased steadily through each beta that I've installed. And yeah, it's now at 95% um, from when I started at 98% on beta one. So just be aware, there are going to be some recalculations. Uh, I'm not necessarily saying the battery life is, um, or the battery health is directly affected by iOS 14, but I've noticed my battery life has, and that will degrade your maximum capacity. So just be aware of that. Um, if you go ahead and install the public or developer betas, um, I just wanted to let you guys know that little bit of information there. Okay, so typically this is the part where I go on and on about speed and performance, benchmark numbers, and all of that good stuff, but I really just wanted to highlight that the user experience is so much better than in beta four. The benchmarks are honestly quite similar, so I won't waste your time with those, but I will say that, that the buggy experience that I was experiencing before uh, seems to be gone now and everything seems to be working a lot more smoothly, which is really, really nice to see. The notification to app issue I mentioned before is currently not an issue, so thankfully that is now fixed, along with a few other annoying UI glitches, which were super bothersome in our previous builds. Now, one thing that I did notice was that speed and performance feels a lot more consistent. 
In previous builds, you'd see a lot of speed, but then five minutes later, a huge slowdown in performance for seemingly no reason whatsoever. In beta 5, whether I'm opening up apps, playing games, or going throughout my daily tasks like emails and web browsing, everything seems very consistent, more in line with what an official release would actually feel like. Okay, so we went over speed and performance, and with those topics out of the way, I did want to talk about one more thing, that is battery life. I'll be honest with you, the battery life did sort of go down in our last build, and based on our benchmarks, it's not looking too much better in this build, but I'm not exactly sure what uh, is causing that poor battery life. Um, it does seem like battery life is draining a lot more quickly throughout the day versus when I was on iOS 13 builds, and hopefully this can be kind of turned around because it is quite annoying when your battery is not lasting the entire day. But I just wanted to let you guys know that battery life is not so great right now, but uh, it's not the worse, just be aware that if you go to a uh, beta build or maybe a public beta build that you may experience just a slight loss in battery life throughout the day. Okay guys, so that was iOS 14 beta 5. And of course, if you have any comments or questions, you are more than welcome to leave those in the comment section down below. And I'll be sure to get back to those as soon as possible. Now, if you guys are considering hopping onto the betas on your daily drivers, I would say to proceed with caution and do expect just a few drawbacks as this is still a beta build. I personally have the beta installed onto my daily driver and I'm not really dissatisfied with it. So I will say that personally, I would install install at this point just to check out all of the awesome new features that come with iOS 14. So guys, that was today's video. And just in case you didn't hear before, there are updates to other betas like watchOS 7, iPadOS 14, macOS Big Sur, and tvOS 14. So just in case you were on those betas, you should be getting an update via the software update page. And of course, if you want to hop onto the public beta builds, beta.apple.com is the site you want to visit. Now, if you guys like today's video, make sure to hit that like button, get subscribed, and also hit that notification bell button to stay up to date on our latest content. We actually have a Mac Pro build coming up in the next couple of weeks and also some changes coming to the channel, so stay tuned for more news on that. So with that being said, thanks for watching today's update, and hopefully I'll be seeing you all in some future content. Until then, I hope you all have an awesome day.